So I guess, how would you describe the way Michigan's offense operates as far as how quickly they get rid of the ball, and then what does that mean for this defense and anything special for you guys in front? Um, you know, they're a big offensive line. Um, quarterback is very skilled, and so we just got to bring it every, every down, you know, get our hands up, try to uh, deflect balls, but really just play all, all of, overall good defense. What did you like so much about the way that this – defensive line handled the run last week, more than just like what the eventual stats at the end of the day were. What did you, when you went back and watched film, what stood out to you? Um, just really how, how much we were detailed in our technique um, shows up on the film and how um, really what Coach Jade teaches us in terms of fitting, fitting the run and how to make a new line of scrimmage. And we have a big challenge ahead of us this weekend. Um, they pride themselves on running the ball. And yeah. The fourth row left, Colin Gay rival kind of in the same vein, Haskell, you were mentioning kind of the, the snowball effect for the uh, run defense on uh, Saturday. And I'm curious about, as you watch Michigan's running backs, I mean, do you see a chance to kind of pick up where you guys <coughs> left off from Michigan mm -hmm. State? Is it kind of like the same style of run, the same kind of approach for you guys? Um, it's just, I mean, it's it's a different opponent. This is our rival. Um, I wouldn't say it's the same ap approach. You know, there's a lot of feelings and a lot of that goes into this game, you know. We prepare for this game 365 days a year. So um, to say we, it's the same approach as last week, it's not. You know, um, it's rivalry week. And we know how important it is um, to get this win. And um, for the running backs, the running backs are very versatile. Um, they're great running backs in the backfield. And um, we have a big challenge ahead of us this weekend. Do you feel like momentum, though, just based on you know shutting down kind of a Heisman hopeful in the backfield can Give you guys, I mean, uh, Zach was talking, Zach Harrison was talking about confidence uh, for you guys. And I'm curious, does that kind of, could that snowball into kind of the confidence and just the mentality mm -hmm. of what you guys do uh, against Blake Corum and, or maybe Blake Corum and Hassan Haskins? Yeah, no, you know, um, whether it was me last week or it could be Zach this week or it could be Tommy Eichenberg, it, you never know. So whoever um, sparks that energy early in the game, everybody will feed off of. Haskell, happy Thanksgiving. I, um, I'm curious about how you manage your emotions this week. You, know, you talk about this is the kind of week you prepare for every day all year. Um, and yet, <coughs> I have to think there's some level of trying to make things feel normal, you know, going through normal film sessions, normal practices to, so that you, know, you, you have a routine focus coming into this week. How, how do you manage the emotions when you want to ride really high or, or, or trying to pick yourself up off of things. Yeah, you know, um, try to keep it as normal as possible, especially in, uh, as well. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Um, you know, just trying to manage everything with that comes with this week. You have Thanksgiving, and then you kind of go, got to go from, you know, being in the family sense and being happy to then changing your focus back to the game, you know, and getting locked in and focused. Um, it's just always being able to flip that switch on and off um, Coach Day always refers to, you know, there's time to relax and um, have fun and enjoy each other's time, especially with Thanksgiving. But there's a time when you have to flip that switch on and be locked in um, to your technique and everything that you do in preparation for the game. Uh, to his right, uh, Jacob Benji. Jacob Bench, excuse, excuse me, the lantern. Hey, Casco, we talked to Brian earlier, and he mentioned how he feels as a coach that there's a sense of pressure going into this game. I'm curious. From your vantage point as a player, do players feel that sense of pressure and how do they go against balancing that and, and during rivalry week? You know, some guys haven't, this is their first time going into the rivalry week. There's um, fresh faces that didn't play in this game two years ago. You know, unfortunately, with unfortunate circumstances, uh, the game was canceled last year. So um, there's, a new, there's new faces on all over the field, offense and defense. So it's just managing this week. There's a lot of pressure, but um, we thrive in pressure. You mentioned how the game was canceled last year, of course, and as you go in preparing for this week, how much does last year kind of affect how much you're preparing for this week and how much you're putting into another matchup with um, the Wolverines? Um, it's just really enhancing what we did last week, you know, just sacrifices, whatever you got to do, whether it's get your homework turned in earlier in the week, it's, um, you know, talking to your parents earlier in the week so that you have more more time to focus on this on this team because, like I said, this is rivalry weekend. This is the one that you dot on your calendar every year. Uh, front row right, Jeremy Birmingham, Letterman Row. Pastor, how do you 
make sure that guys don't get too emotional, though, this week. I mean, you know, last week you had the big speech pregame, and then after the game you said, hey, I meant what I said. You had a huge stop on the first play of the game, which sort of sparked the whole defense. But you know that this game's a little different in the way that things happen pregame and all the jawing back and forth. How do you keep guys from not going too far? Um, just kind of reverts back to what Coach Day says, you know, play with emotion, don't emotion play with you. And so um, we need everybody out there, whether, you know, just in between plays, just getting chippy. You don't want a guy thrown out over a stupid penalty. You know, we need everybody out there. And so um, just for that, it's just as me being the oldest and the leader on the team, um, I need to control my emotions and they look at me as an example. So I need to, um, to make sure that everybody follows me in the sense of, you know, making sure that your emotions are in check and when to play between the whistle. How much was this game emphasized to you in your recruitment? You're from Las, you know, from Las Vegas, from Hawaii. Like you weren't a kid who grew mm -hmm. up in this. How, how did they emphasize it to you in recruiting? Um, when I first walked in the building, there was no blue pens. There was no, you know, you couldn't wear blue. Me coming from Bishop Gorman, I had our colors were orange and blue, and so um, when I when I walked in, I had a blue sweatshirt on. Immediately, it was taken off. And um, Coach Meyer, uh, the head coach at the time, really emphasized how much this rivalry is and how much um, it means to not only us in the university, but the fans as well. Uh, right next door, Austin Ward, Letterman Rowe. Pascal, has all that emphasis that you heard about during your recruitment, has it lived up to playing in that game? Mm. I mean, it's just, it. I truly honestly believe it's the greatest rivalry in sport. You know, this dates back. I've had people's grandparents talk about, great grandparents talk about this rivalry, talk about this rivalry when, you know, Woody Hayes was here and how much this meant. And I mean, it runs deep, not only in the football program, but in all of the state of Ohio. What, uh, how much thought had you given to your pregame speech on Saturday? I know you said you, you said it and you meant it. Mm -hmm. but like, was that just in the moment? Did you plan on saying that all along? What, what goes into that? I mean, I didn't plan on saying it, it just, it was, it was on my heart, and that's how I felt um, going through that that week. You know, um, it's just it, it wasn't planned out at all. It wasn't in a shot. It was just what I was feeling and what my emotion was feeling at the time and place, and um, and I said it. And so, yeah. Uh, deep right, uh, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Rowe. You had just talked to to Jeremy about you know setting the tone and being a leader, but on the field when you take the field in the first play of the game blow up the backfield and, and make a huge impact. How much do you think that sets the tone for the rest of the defense to, to do that on the first play against a Heisman Trophy candidate running back? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just it, it sets an example, you know, for all the, not only the guys now, but guys who are going to be playing next year, that once you set that example and set that tone in the beginning of the game, first snap, it's, like I said on Saturday, it's a snowball effect. And then it radiates throughout the whole team. And once you have that energy, you know, you just keep that energy going, and then everybody is on um, clicking on all cylinders. Uh, right next door, Mark Coon, uh, Toledo TV. <clears throat> Tomorrow, Haskell Garrett's Thanksgiving giveaway. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little about that, the, the motivation behind that, the inspiration behind that, what you're hoping to accomplish. Yeah, no, in, in high school and even growing up, it was always emphasizing my family to give back, you know, and I, feel, I felt that with NIL. And the funds that I made through NIL um, gave, gave me this great opportunity uh, to use my platform and to use the financial funds to help, you know, other families in the community of Ohio. And um, I feel that with all the support that we have, it's something that I can do personally to give back to the community. Got time for just a couple more. Uh, uh, third row right, uh, Tim May, the Emeritus Journal. <laughs> 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 My real question: What was the tradition uh, Hawaiian uh, Thanksgiving Day? What y'all have? Um, we, there's a, it's a lot. You know, there's turkey. You know, your traditional turkey, uh, yams, collard greens, stuff like that. Um, but uh, for me, it was really just going outside and preparing the pig, um, with my parents and with my family members. And um, when you sit up all night with your cousins and just talk and have that family time. Um, just to slow down and have that, that quality time with your siblings um, meant the world to me over just meals. And that's what we really emphasize. A lot of things are based around meals in Hawaii and in the Polynesian culture. And, you know, you get to really connect and um, love your siblings with all the social media and things that are going on in the world. 
um, it allows you to stop and put a pause on things. Uh, when, when, you, when you make that uh, speech you had or the little talk you had in the uh, uh, before the game and then you step up and make that play, was it, did it feel like a, a shot of adrenaline goes through you? Or was it like getting hit by a lightning bolt? What was it like to like follow through if you follow my drift? Yeah, I mean, whether it's a shot of a lightning bolt or a shot of adrenaline, um, just really, it, it just came through me. And um, for me to allow my, for me to do that and to, for it to be able to energize the whole team um, is truly a blessing and honor. Um, it just really shows how much, you know, my brothers really uh, trust me and allow me to set an example for them and them to feed off of me and be that energizer, buddy. And then one last question. Uh, you guys bust your rear ends almost 24-7, 365 around here to play in games like this. Uh, what is it like to be going into a game where everything you've worked for, and obviously it's like that for you guys almost every week, but, mm -hmm. I mean, now it's like, you know, win or stay home, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, what, is, what is that like to kind of be facing that moment? I mean, it's it's what you love about Ohio State. It's why you're recruited here. Um, it's why you commit here. It's to be in moments like this. You know, you have two back-to-back -back weekends with college game day. Like, who doesn't want that as a top recruit? And um, I just feel that around here, we live under pressure and we love chaos. So um, I'm, I'm excited for Saturday. And final question uh, for Haskell, uh, front row middle, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Haskell. Um, you had your breakthrough year last year, then you're denied the chance to play uh, Michigan. How much did that factor into your decision to come back, to be able to play one more time in this game? Um, I'd, I'd say it was a part of it. Um, it, it. It was a small snippet, but for me really to come back was, I wasn't quite ready to leave the brotherhood yet. And for me to have the opportunity with a COVID year was that opportunity to you know have one last year with my brothers and uh, you know, leave behind a great legacy. Um, and to just leave, you know, leave Ohio State better than when I found it. And, you know, I know you went through some injury stuff in the middle of the season. How do you feel now? Do you feel like you're back to being the Haskell Garrett you, you want to be? Mm, I feel 100%.